Well, hello, friends. Uh, welcome back to DevTools Hacking. Um, today, I thought I would do a little bit of documentation integration thing in the IDE. So I'll show you what I have in mind. Uh, now, um, Serenity comes with a help browser that Sergey made, uh, which is very cool. It allows you to browse the main pages that we have. Of course, we don't have super many yet, but we have some. And um, so imagine that you were to have a call to access in your program, or say, McDeer, right? Um, so we're going to have McDeer, la, 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 and some mode, I don't know. Um, maybe a directory should be executable, actually. But anyway. Now, what if when you hover over this, it would pop up um, something like um, a little pop-up that has some information here, like maybe the um, synopsis, or maybe we would open up the, um, allow you to open up the um, help page or something. I'm not really sure, um, but some kind of integration with this. Um, so yeah, that's what I would like to do. So I think the, um, I think the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to make it possible to figure out what token is under the cursor at the moment. And then um, maybe put a tool tip if we have a man page uh, with the same name as that token. And specifically in the um, category two and three of the manual, because those are the system calls and the, um, and the library calls. So let's, uh, let's do something like that. So first thing is we're going to need to um, hook into the mouse move event to see what's under the um, cursor. So that will be in the Hack Studios editor class, which is just a subclass of the G text editor. We can override the um, mouse move event from G text editor, and then we can take a look at what we are um, mouse moving over. All right. So here, um, I mean, let's let's make sure that the um, G text editor has a chance to deal with the mouse move. Although I don't recall what it does. Oh yeah, selection handling. So if you're dragging to select like this, the mouse move event. Um, moves the selection based on your movement. Anyways, um, if you are hovering over something, let's see, so we got to figure out what is the token that's under the mouse at the moment. So let's see, um, I think we can compute the um, text position where we are pointing by calling um, text position at event position, although that API is not available to us because it's private. What if it would be protected instead? What if? Okay. So now this will be like um, the line and column of whatever you are um, hovering over. So we'll say if text position is valid, well, if it's not valid, we'll just, nothing more happens. But if it is valid, then we are going to want to find the um, span here. So let's see if, um, how do we do this? Spans. How do we get to the spans? The document has spans. Ah. <laughs> um, I forget how this works already. So um, the editor has a text document. And um, my phone is buzzing, and but it's it's not urgent. Um, if the document spans uh, is empty, then also there's also nothing to do. Actually, if the spans is empty, we can just return immediately here. We don't need to compute the text position. But if we do have spans, which means the spans, having spans basically just means that we have um, color and 
font information for the document. And, and effectively here, it means that we have done syntax highlighting to the document. Um, and we can just piggyback on the fact that syntax highlighting code will um, produce individual spans for each token. Um, so we can just f find the span that we are in and look at the text of it, and that will be our um, token. Uh, so, da -da 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 -da. Um, what am I thinking? We gotta find the span, right? So right now, this is the way that we find the span. We just have to iterate them. Could put them in a better data structure at some point, but right now they're just in a vector. So if span range contains the text position, then this is the span for us. So this is uh, where we do something. This means that we found it. All right, and then I guess what we want to do is we want to extract the document text for this range. And I don't think there is anything for that at the moment. We'll say um, covered span text is document um, text uh, for in range, let's say. And let's just invent that functionality. And then here we'll say like hover. Just so we can see what we are hovering, basically. That'll be a start. Okay. G text document. Okay, so we'll have string. Um, text in range, const g text range. Okay. And how is this going to work? So a text range is um, like a start position and an end position, and a position is a line and a column. So I guess we want to do like whatever the um, copy action does, like when you copy, when you press control C in the text editor, copy, yeah, here, copy. Then we have selected text and presumably that does something very similar because the selection is a range. Um, yeah, right here. Selection is normalized selection, and then we iterate through it, and this, we could just have this call the helper instead. So return document dot text in, in range. Normalized selection. Normalized means that um, the selection can be like from left to right or right to left, but when we normalize it, it just means that um, we make it left to right. Um, so right to left selections are just flipped around so that they go from left to right. That just makes it easier to reason about the selection, even though it's it's like they're equivalent, right? It's just a different expression of the same selection. That way we can iterate from start to end without having to think about it. Um, and actually, I guess I guess we can have text in range normalized the incoming range. So instead, we could just say so m selection, and then in text in range here. We'll take the range and uh, normalize it. Oh, there's such a thing. Look at that. I've already, um, apparently I've already sort of thought of this. <laughs> That's nice. Um, okay. 
it's always nice to find these little nuggets from your past self where you thought about the future and uh, like, oh, I might need this. So I, you made it generic somehow. Um, Cause a lot of people, a lot of people will say that uh, you shouldn't unnecessarily make things generic, but when you do this for a long time, you sort of develop a sense for which things are good to make generic and which things would be a waste of time. And um, when it comes to um, like primitive types or like near primitive types, um, like building type, building block types, like in this case, like uh, text position, text range, stuff like that. If you can make them um, have more cleverness um, or like more abilities to do primitive operations like a text range having a normalized uh, function, I think that's that's a very good thing to make generic from early on. But anyways, uh, it's, it's the kind of thing that you develop a sense for over time. So I needed String Builder, right? Blop, blop, blop. Okay. Da, 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 da. And this actually <laughs> this actually slotted in here really nicely. So selection, I guess, is the wrong name for this. So we'll just say it. Um, we'll rename this one to input range, maybe, and then we'll rename this one to. Um, Normalize, or just why don't we just call it range? Actually, okay, that's pretty good. Usually, this is my convention for this like a range, um, like argument range. If I want to uh, use the name, but I want to manipulate it somehow, and I can't manipulate the um, argument because the argument is const. Um, and also, I find it kind of in poor taste to take an argument and then mess around with the argument. Um, I feel like uh, when it comes to sort of logical value arguments like this one, um, you, you, it would be weird to mess with it. Anyway, it's okay to make a copy and mutate that, which is what we do here. Uh, anyways, so that's text and range. So let's see if this whole thing just works. Wouldn't that be nice? Delete selection. This is kind of a big and chunky function. So much of this text editor code is like not optimized at all. Like very naive data structures. Um, I've totally prioritized just making it work, and it, there's so much room to optimize this by using better data structures and better algorithms and everything. Um, and there's all the time in the world to do that, so I'm not worried. Okay, so let's see. We are hovering over white space, hovering return, <laughs> and I guess the comments are a whole span, but that's okay. So we're definitely missing the last character here. So what's up with this? Like the range of a span is it's a little bit awkward that it works like that. Mm. Let's let me dump out the um, actual range here. Um, just want to see what the range looks like. Okay, so six four to six nine. So here is. I mean, zero base, so you can see the line here is seven four, right? And um, six four, six nine, and that's six ten is right here. But yeah, right, so that's how selections work. But 
when we're talking about the range of a token, then it doesn't work like a selection because the range of the token ends on the last character of the token. It doesn't end after the token because that would be weird. So, or would that be weird? I'm not sure if that would be weird. Um, but right now I'm just going to roll with it and um, adjust this. So we're going to have to add one to the range when we extract the text. Um, span range. Adjusted range, let's see. Um, but I'm um, set end, or is it possible to access the end directly? Can we just do that? Let's try it out. Okay, so it's not perfect, like, um, needs a little bit of help, because I, I, like, when I'm hovering over the zero here, it says that I'm hovering over the, um, semicolon, but I guess it's because if I actually click here, then it will indeed put the cursor on the right side of the zero, which is, um, where the, this, this cursor here is that position, so... This is something that I'll probably have to uh, reorganize a little bit later, but I'm not going to start doing that now because I want to move forward on the feature work. So I think what we have is good enough to push forward on the feature. Um, so let's say when you're hovering a token, then we will we want it to look it up in the manual and see if we can find it. So let's just make sure that we have something that's in the manual. Um, showing up by default in our little test program. So we'll say hey, um, XYZ. Um, and we'll just do something like that, just so that we can look up McDeer. Okay. Now, how are we going to do this? Uh, let's see. If that debug get it. What do I, don't I know I say that? Editor to bar. Yeah. Just, I don't want the spam. <laughs> so let's see. If, um, uh, da, 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 um show um, documentation tooltip if needed. Hover span text. If available, let's say. Okay. I just want to put this out in a separate function because otherwise it'll get a bit messy here. So, um, name, I guess. Okay, and then here what we got to do is look it up. So the easiest way to do that um, is we can just use a directory iterator. 
um, and iterate through the um, man page directories. So we'll just start by doing that. Obviously, we should cache this information because it's pretty heavy to look through the file system every time you move the mouse. Um, let's see. And uh, we'll say user share man man two. Um, flags, see dear iterator flags. What is the thing called? Isn't it skip dots? Yeah, because I don't care about dot and dot dot. Um, while it has next next path. If oh no, um, man name let's say. say hovered token actually makes it a little bit easier to understand what's going on here so if name is the same as hovered token then um <clears throat> show to who provides show to the g application thank you the show tool tip G app and is that static? No, because it uses a member. Um, okay, show tooltip, and I guess we can just show the name first. And oh, we're gonna need a screen location actually. So uh, let's say screen location. Where do we get that from? We need the screen location. Event position translated by this widget's screen relative rec location. That's how we get the screen position. Now we just have to tweak the prototype here. So we'll say const point screen location. All right. Um, now we're only doing man two. We got to do man three as well, but we'll start with this and see what we can come up with. Um, and then here, if we find it, we'll return. All right. Let's see how this works out. So it should show us um, for McDeer, but not for anything else. Da, da. That does not work. Nothing happens at all. That's not very good. Um, is that actually where the files are, even? Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah right. Because um, the name is the whole path name. So, path. We gotta extract the name here. Is file system path title? I think it's called title. This thing that extracts the. Um, uh, if a file name is like foo.bmp, then the title is foo, and the extension is bmp. Um, so I think we can extract the title of the, of the path this way. So if I hover around anything else, it doesn't care. But when I hover my deer, then we get a tooltip. All right, that's pretty cool. So um, hide tooltip, I guess, if we don't have anything to show. Um, And uh, yeah, so oh, I guess we gotta say the. Actually, that's my bad. And um, turn. It's a little bit awkward that we have to remember to hide it in all these different ways. 
Um, but it's okay. So it would be cool to do something more than just this. But let's just see that we can hide it correctly. Look here. Why does it do that? Is it because I'm like moving the cursor into the tooltip and then, oh, that's kind of annoying. <laughs> mm. Maybe, oh, we could probably avoid that by offsetting the screen location a little bit. So we'll just translate it by three pixels, like down and to the right. Let me just see what that looks like in practice. Yeah, it works better because then like move one step to the right and it doesn't <laughs> doesn't clobber it. It's weird that uh, it follows you, but I kind of like the effect. Look at the CPU usage up here. It's like searching through the um, directories whenever I move the mouse. Anyways, um, so. We can make a cache of these. Let's see. Um, what's the lazy thing to do? Let me just do uh, okay. like a lazily populated cache. That's just a hash table of strings. Um, why not just a vector even? Static vector string, um, man, paths. Man, um, paths. If paths is empty, then do this thing. Oh, actually, maybe it could even be a hash map of the string to the string, because then it's um, we can have the token map to the path. That makes more sense. Because then we can um, get the title out here as well. So we'll just say title. Is that and then we'll say paths set title path. All right, and oops, forgot to spell that correctly. And then here we can just do auto. Man path is man paths get hover token. Man path has value. If it doesn't have value, then location the hide tooltip. Otherwise, we do have something. So then we can use the um, man. Uh, oh, wait, hold on. We need both um, the key and the uh, value. Okay, then we can't use get. We have to use find. If it is man paths and good old iterator style. And then we need it value. Let me put these uh, four, four instead. Okay, that's kind of tidy actually. And then 
Um, it would be nice to show something more in there, but let me just see that it's still working. Um That's not what I wanted to do. And uh, because the, um, it's value, oh shit, it should be the other way around. Also, I noticed that the names are not including the whole path here, so <laughs> you gotta fix that. Um, well, this will be a bit ugly, but whatever, just deal with it for now. We're just gonna do it this way for now, and we're just gonna do man two right now. Let's say fix me. Should this should also search man three. Also the others places. Um, all right. Um, and then I guess I would like to show something cooler than just the um, tooltip. So let's make a window. Documentation tooltip window. Okay, and then let's grab G window. And we can just show it after we move it. Move to um, screen location translated for four. That part's still fine. Um, but we gotta construct this. So let's do that when we first construct the editor, which I guess we don't, oh, here's the constructor. Um, so let's move this out of line. And constructors, I'd like to put them early in the file, so. And documentation tool the window is G window construct. Um set racked. We'll make it four hundred by one hundred, just because whatever. And I think we're gonna put an HTML view in there. And we're also gonna need lib markdown, because man pages are markdown. And damn, I forget. Um, I think it's MD document that we want. Because we do. Uh, crap, how do we do this? I, no, that's not it. What do we do in the help command? Or I guess the help will just. What does help do? <laughs> MD document. Just make an empty one and then call parse on it with the source. Yeah, 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 right. And then render to HTML. And then that's what we display. So let's try that and see how it goes. This might turn out very goofy, but we'll see. Um, it'll be interesting, whatever we end up with. Auto HTML view. <clears throat> say no parent for you and then it will become the um, main widget of the documentation tooltip okay and the documentation tooltip is going to be a g window type tooltip which essentially just means that it's frameless and um, sits above all, all of the other windows it's in, it's like an always on top frameless window is what that effectively 
test the Windows server. Um, so maybe that's all that we need here. And then before we show it, you want to, um, I mean, shit, we're going to need to actually, let's, let's have a pointer to that HTML view. Otherwise this is going to be annoying. Oh, my phone is buzzing, buzzing, buzzing. Is everyone okay? Yes. Okay. Um, okay. So now we have a pointer to the HTML view. And we can put something in there. So documentation and HTML view. Set document. So we're about to make a document here. And first thing, we'll start with the MD document. So, man document, I guess. And this will be the HTML document. Okay, um, man document parse. And parse takes um, string input. So we gotta open up that file actually. This again is gonna be quite inefficient because we're gonna do it every time you move the mouse, but we gotta start with something. Um, I guess we'll just load the file up. Uh, IT value is the path. Okay, and we need C file. Okay, and then if File no open for read only, then fine. No documentation for you. Um, <clears throat> then we'll just read all and parse that. Full success. And then we'll say if no success, return as well. Okay, and then we got to make a document from libhtml, so um, auto html document is parse, what is it, parse html, I think we need to include the html parser for that, parse HTML. parse HTML. man document, render to html, and no url needed, okay. And then we'll say if no HTML document, return. Otherwise, we set that document on the view and put put it up on screen. Oh, and we forgot to include something. HTML view is needed here because the destructor is in line. So let's move the destructor out of line so that we don't um, we don't add a dependency in the header. And you don't like me because you don't link against libhtml. We can change that. So you need to link against the very cool libhtml and libmarkdown. All right. Okay, this is not having the effect I was hoping for. <laughs> uh, can't always work on the first try. So let's see. No, man path for uh, hover token, right? Uh, debug opening it value fail to open. Fail to parse markdown and uh, fail to parse HTML. Okay. Mm. 
No man path for Mathir. So the hover token. Wait, but this is all stupid again. Was it stupid the whole time? Maybe I was the one who was stupid. Uh, anyways, it was backwards. The key and the value were backwards. Poop. Oh, look at that. Oh, and we go away. Poop. That's adorable. Um, that's a really interesting effect. So it's going to need to be a bit bigger and maybe we could style it a little bit differently but I really dig the um, general idea here of like why don't we just pop up the whole thing and see what happens so let's see if we can style it a bit differently because the white um, is a bit jarring I think or not jarring but it's like it doesn't it doesn't look right if the thing has a white background so let's give it like um like a yellowish tintish background sort of like tooltip has by default which is in G application tooltip window has a color somewhere here let's just steal that color um, can we just would it be possible if we were to just Documentation, HTML view, setback, ground color. I don't know if this will work or if we have to actually style it with CSS. Let's take a look. So I feel like if you don't set any color explicitly, it should just default to the widget background color. Um, but I'm not that lucky, okay. Or, wait, am I that lucky and I'm just uh, not seeing it because the color was not obvious enough. Let me just see, because I'm, I'm starting to get a little bit annoyed with this monitor because I can't tell uh, white apart from like uh, light gray or light yellow, but indeed it's not red, so. Um, we should have a yellow tint. That's quite yellow, actually, this number. Um, okay. So. I guess we got to be a little fancier and we can just do something like we have an HTML document so why don't we mess with it a little bit this will just well we can just let's see first child of type uh, no no let's do head And we will um, be a little sneaky here because we don't have a non-const version of this. But we'll do that. And this is something that eh, it needs a little work in um, libhtml to have non-const versions of head and body and stuff like that. But this will work for now. So we say head element, append child style element. We're going to make a little style element here. We'll need the element factory. Dumb element factory. Okay. Um, auto style element is Create element. Um, style. Style element. And we can do this here actually. Pen child. Um, oh, and we'll need text. So this is um, this is kind of fun to um, bring in libhtml into other things to embed it not just in the browser but like to use it for um, rich text components uh, obviously this the way that i'm accessing the internals right now to build up a dom and stuff uh, that could be a lot smoother 
but come on, like it's still a very primitive library, so we got to use some primitives here. In the future, we can have a much nicer API for this. Like I would really like to be able to do something akin to inner HTML, you know, where you could just say um, this element, and you could assign um, inner HTML to it, and it would just replace whatever children it has with a newly parsed um, HTML fragment. But we don't have that right now. But we have basic DOM mutation, so that's what we're going to use. Um, dot new text. And the text is going to be um, body, background, color, and what the heck was the color I wanted? This. see if that works. Oh, wait, hold on. Did I actually append it? Mm, I did. Okay. Oh, crap. What did we do wrong? I'm appending a child, but something is null. Okay. Who am I appending? Um, is this one, is the head element null here? Maybe the, um, maybe the generated markdown thingy doesn't have a head, but fix up, DOM fix up should give it a head, I would think. A search and fail head element. Okay, so it doesn't have a head element, but we should have done fix up after we parsed. Mm, but fix up does not create a head. Ew. Okay. Um, we can we can do that. So pen child head. Now there will always be a head. I mean, actually not always, but we don't have to solve everything right now. Okay, so now why don't you like me? Oh, because I'd have to do a full rebuild because I'm messing around, messing around with libhtml. Still no head element? If is HTML element. Okay, so what the heck is the output of render to HTML then? Uh, oh, we can see it right here. <laughs> okay, well, why don't we just, let's just take the lazy wrap right now and produce a head. And we can worry about libhtml some other time. And we'll just we'll just fix it in libmarkdown right now, so that libmarkdown always produces a head element in the HTML output. Um, but ultimately, libhtml should deal with all of those types of cases. Uh, this is just the, um, the easiest way to deal with this right now. So here we go, very lovely tint. Now we should make this a lot bigger so that we can actually see it, um, what's going on in there. So let's say that it should instead be 400 by 400 maybe, or 500 by 400, I don't know. I'm just experimenting here. We could also do stuff like, um, Yeah, because it's still, like, obviously it's very, um, 
it still requires you to scroll to see everything. But I like the general idea of it. Maybe it should stay in place, or I don't know. Because it's weird that if I want to like go there, then I have to drag the mouse very quickly, because if I hover outside of my beard, then it goes away. So it's a little awkward, but at the same time, it is very cool. So, <laughs> um, so just to just to like recap what we're doing here, like we're figuring out what token C++ token you're hovering over, and then we check if we have a man page with that name, and if so, we take that markdown man page and render the markdown into HTML and then load that HTML into an HTML, libhtml widget and then show that uh, in a pop-up window here. So that's pretty neat. There's a lot of system components working together here. But the UI is definitely awkward. Um, and I'm not exactly sure what the right fix for this is. Um, maybe the thing is that we're like, we're really only interested in some aspect of this documentation. Um, but maybe that's, maybe I should leave that for like a future thing because I'm thinking that it would be cool if you could see like the prototype of it, um, the synopsis we could show and the description and then, you know, if you wanted to know more than that, then you could click the link or something that would open it up in a separate window and give you the whole thing. But maybe we could do that with the style sheet, actually. We could hide sections. Um, what would this even look like? I kind of want to see what the HTML comes out as. So we get the HTML here. Let's just dump it out, see what it looks like. Okay, so yeah, this is um, it's it's very nice and straightforward, but it's kind of hard to to get to, to be able to like style away these things because the sections don't have titles or like we can't, you can't grab at this with CSS, right? At least not in a, in a very semantically nice way. Uh, it would be cool if this thing here was, was like in a separate div that was called like div uh, ID name uh, and then this would be div ID synopsis and whatever and you could um, display none the ones you didn't want um, but because of the markdown origin, then we don't have that information and we can't easily like jam that in there. So, um, but we could still, we could still work around it. Like we could say, like, uh, we could make the H2s based on the um, index, like the H2 index in the body, we would know that like the first one is name, the second one is synopsis, then it's description and so on. We could use like um, nth child selector, or we could use um, sibling selector. I don't know, there are ways, but but like, that's it's not necessary to do that right now. So I think I'm gonna do a commit here instead because um, I don't wanna get too carried away. So in lib markdown, this is a little bit of a silly commit, but I'm gonna do it. Uh, include a head element of a mint when rendering MD to HTML. Um, this um, should really be uh, HTML, but and just include a uh, head element for now. So 
man page generated man pages always have a head. And what else did we have? The gtext editor stuff to um, factor out the um, text and range. I think that's what this is all about, right? Text and range, moving out from the um, selected text. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we're making text position not be um, protected which was in gtextEditor H. So we can just add these, and it's a nice standalone change. gtextEditor. Um, look gooey. Let's say add gtext document text in range. Text range. Um, this function returns the a string containing text in a given range. The text editor selected text is re-implemented using this. Or is now just a wrapper around this. Okay. And We can just do that as a separate change. Get add G text protected. And 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 and. We have a lot of gunk here, but it's okay. This one we shouldn't keep though. We should like not be super gunky. Failed to open. I guess we could also, in that case, we could give you the error string. So why not? Um, okay. Friendlier manipulation API. Something like inner HTML. Uh, okay. So let's come in here and say Hack Studio. Show um, when hovering over a uh, C token. We have a man <laughs> show on uh, documentation preview and tooltip when hovering um, on identifier hover, I guess. Uh, when hovering over a token, C++ token, um, that we have a man page for. Now show um, the man page in a tooltip. Yeah. This is very, uh, this feels <laughs> rather bulky at the moment. The basic mechanism is really, it is quite neat and just needs a um, bunch of tuning. Yeah. So this is, I think, I think I'm running out of time here. So this is just, uh, this is going to be it for today's video. But um, I think this is definitely something that uh, we can do something more interesting with. Um, just the fact now that we can grab the token that we're hovering and find a man page for it and now we know how to 
turn that man page into um, a widget that we can show. Like that's so cool. And you know, maybe maybe next time, or maybe I'll work on this later. But and maybe we'll end up with not showing it as a tooltip, but in some other way. But I think I'm glad that, that we could get this into place. And um, I think it's pretty neat. So if you made it this far in the video, then I thank you for watching, for hanging out and coming back. And um, yeah, it's, uh, I hope you saw something interesting. Uh, and I just want to say thank you to everyone for continuing to check out my videos and um, my project and, and like to hang out and I've been getting so many comments and messages lately and it's like very positive and very pleasant experience, uh, which is not what they say about YouTube generally, but I, I have to say my experience on YouTube is a very nice one. Uh, we'll see how long it lasts. Anyways, uh, thank you all for hanging out and I will see you next time.